Hi everybody, I'm Simon from VZ Technologies and in today's video we're going to take you through the basic steps of how to open an ECU and how to reseal one safely and securely to put back into the vehicle. So there's a few bits of equipment we're going to need generally for most ECUs. It will vary from ECU manufacturer to ECU manufacturer. Um, sometimes a pair of pliers may be useful to help sort of bend one of the tabs around to reseal an ECU, such as a SID 208 ECU, quite often found on the Siemens ECUs, things like PCR 2.1s instead of a screwed down lids, as we can see here with the screws in the back of the lid on the PCRs, you'll have also described as little tabs, they sort of bend round and clamp into place. But for today's, we're going through um, Bosch ECUs. We've got one that's already opened here, so our training one, a little bit grubby as you can see, it's been used several times um, when dealers come in, they practice on this ECU before they take any sort of bench tuning or boot tuning equipment away with them. And we've got another ECU here, ready to use for our demonstration, how we open the ECU, and the, the methods that we use when we're working on ECU. So first and foremost, we'll go through a bit of the equipment we're going to need. We've got a couple of flathead screwdrivers. You can use a variety of different sort of lever bars or pry bars on there. Uh, flathead screwdrivers tend to be the best. Um, you want ones that you can easily control. You don't want one that's sort of like two foot long, like a big crowbar, because you're not going to have control over it. So when you're trying to lever the lid up, you've got a risk of slipping, damaging the ECU circuit board inside. So something that's got a nice sort of thin edge to it, but a nice wide sort of point to even the pressure as you're lifting up. So a couple of flathead screwdrivers. We're going to need something like a, a standing knife or a box cutting tools, anything with a nice sharp edge on there. This one's quite nice and safe because we can just slide it out a small amount. We need this to help break the silicon seal that's going to be just inside the edge of the ECU. If we can break that with the blade, it means it's got less resistance as we're trying to lift the ECU lid up. It's going to take less effort and also, again, less risk of damage to the ECU. We're not having to put loads of pressure on those sort of lever bars. We've also got ourselves a little electric screwdriver here, just to help us take the ECU screws out a little bit quicker. Uh, you can use a normal sort of screwdriver on there. They are Torx bits, typically in ECUs, but some may be uh, posi or sort of Phillips heads on there. Whatever you need, obviously, find the right screwdriver head if you like, for the screw that's in there, and just take the screws out. Remember, obviously, to keep them somewhere safe. Don't lose them, because you will need them when we're putting the ECU lid back on. We've also got some general sort of multi-purpose clutch and brake cleaner. This helps break the seal again on the silicon that's holding that lid in place. Now, not all lids will have that silicon seal, but it does help break that seal if it is there, and helps just separate the lid from the circuit board if it's uh, bonded on in any sort of position. The beautiful thing about this is you can sort of soak the ECU in that, clutch or brake cleaner, make sure you let it dry for a period of time, of course. We don't want to be connecting to anything while it's wet, but because of the nature of this, it does evaporate off. So if you leave it for a period of time, it will evaporate off. It doesn't leave any nasty residues on there, and it doesn't leave anything conductive after either. So it's a really handy thing. Um, we do recommend strongly that you do not, to be clear, do not use heat when trying to open the ECU. Whilst it can be beneficial, Heat the silicon up around the outside, it makes it more pliable, easier to sort of peel the lid and stretch the lid up, especially to get the blade underneath and create that separation. The risk of using heat is very dangerous. To get it hot enough to sort of soften that silicon seal up, you run the risk of the heat bypassing the ECU lid, getting onto the circuit board, and you could have the tiniest little sort of one or two millimeter wide uh, resistors and little connections on the board just moving slightly. The, the solder gets warm the heat blowing through from your heat gun can literally blow the resistor off. You may never see that resistor again and you've got no idea why the car won't start. Well, it's because the resistor disappeared out the side of the ECU and it's on your workshop floor somewhere. Good luck trying to find it. Don't use heat on an ECU if you can help it trying to open the lid. We've also got what looks the most like general sort of uh, multi-purpose silicon on there. This is actually, uh, I think it's called black gasket. Um, making silicon on there. You want something that is obviously water resistant, hence the silicon, but something that's temperature resistant as well. So because of the nature of this, it's not going to be conductive on the ECU board, and it also withstands, I think in this case, this particular one, up to 260 degrees. If we're getting much above 260 degrees on the ECU, we've got bigger problems as than whether the silicon's going to go a bit soft and pliable. We're kind of trying to work out why someone's put the ECU in an oven on gas mark five, what's happening in the engine bay, what's causing that ECU to get so hot when it's sat in its own little box somewhere, nice and protected on some of the BMWs, for example, under the scuttle panel, underneath the windscreen. We shouldn't really be having 250 plus degrees of temperature in those general areas. Right, so let's get into it then. We're going to go through the process. We're going to start opening the ECU, starting with our little electric screwdriver first and foremost. And we're just going to connect into our little torque screws. and take them all out. So 
as I four screws out, and now we're left with the ECU lid still in place, the screws are out, the securing pins are out, so now we need to basically soak the outside of that ECU lid around the edge with our brake and clutch cleaner. Obviously don't do it on a big angle like this, because as soon as you spray it's all going to run off. So you want to keep it on a nice flat surface, something you don't mind getting any overspray on, and it's going to hold it about a 45 degree angle, a few inches away, and spray around. If you've got a nice little applicator straw, as this particular one has, a bit like sort of WD-40 or most sort of lubricating sprays have, we can put that into there, and we've got a nice controlled spray that's going to go all the way around the outside. You want to leave it on there for a good sort of minute or two, maybe reapply it a couple of times so you know it's thoroughly sort of soaked in. And once you've completed that, we then move on to using our screwdrivers. Now when we're connecting with our screwdrivers to the ECU, you'll notice on some ECUs we have this indented edge. This is where our heat sinks are on the ECU. This is the hardest part of the ECU to actually open, to separate. This is going to be like the, the final bit we're going to work our way towards. What we recommend is you start on the opposite side somewhere, either in one of the bottom corners or top corners. Usually this bottom corner is the best because you're not right next to the connector block. You're going to get your screwdriver under the edge of the ECU lid and you're going to start to work your way around, almost sort of walking the screwdrivers along the edge. A little bit of pressure, move one along, lift it up, other one along to take the pressure and sort of work your way around the ECU lid. As you go along, periodically you're going to stop every sort of inch or two we got our standing knife in there and we're just going to put in just underneath to the edge and you can see this raised edge of the ECU there. That's as far as we want to go. No more about sort of five or six mil. You'll feel the edge of the silicon there and we're just going to gently apply a bit of pressure as we slide along trying to break that silicon seal. You'll hear it, it's almost like um, something sizzling in a frying pan, that sort of like sound as you're going along. Can't quite do the impression of it but you'll know the sound when you see it and hear it. It's, you can hear the silicon starting to separate on there. As we work our way around, we're gently lifting the ECU lid up. We want to encroach on the ECU. Know more about this sort of black edge that you can see on the screwdriver here. So again, it's a few millimetres. So that black edge perfectly takes us into where that raised lip is on the ECU lid. That's where our silicon seal is. That's where we're trying to get into. It is important we do not insert the screwdriver like this. This is going to be very bad for the ECU. Risk of taking things off the ECU circuit board, damaging microprocessors, and basically having a big expensive repair bill at the end of it. So you only need to encroach a few millimetres, about half a centimetre or so, into the ECU in most cases to separate the ECU lid. It's also important that we get the correct angle. So I'm just going to move this into the centre of the screen now so you can see. We do not want to be putting our screwdrivers in and then lifting in this direction. What that's going to do, if you see the screwdriver here, that's going to be putting all of the pressure on the edge of the ECU. We're actually going to be levering against the ECU circuit board. So if you look at our ECU over here that's already open, if I apply that method, I'm actually pushing on the circuit board, trying to lift the ECU lid up. Again, if something goes wrong, I run the risk of sliding across the ECU. We really don't want that to happen. So when we're in there, in that few millimetres, what we're looking to do is lift away, so up and away. So we're pushing against the edge of the ECU itself, not lifting up and onto the circuit board. So we want the pressure away. And we're going to work our screwdrivers around, as I said, every sort of few inches or so. Then we're getting our nice sort of uh, blade on here, our standing knife. The beautiful thing with this is because it's adjustable, we can set it to a nice safe amount so that even if we did slip, I can't go any further than the earth strip that runs around the outside. So even if I go slightly further than the silicon seal, I'm not going to suddenly start taking resistors and capacitors off the board. Now it will vary from ECU to ECU as to how far you want to encroach under the lid, but this is where it's important to use the instructions and information from the tuning tool that you're using to have a look at the circuit board layout first. So you might see any sort of dangerous spots where there's a few chips quite close to that one corner. Maybe we sort of don't encroach as much in that edge of the ECU. So always check the instruction manual on the tuning tool you're using before you open the ECU. Um, obviously you want to make sure it's supported as well first before you open the ECU and then realise oh, it's not even supported on the tool. So always double check the instruction manuals first on any tools you're using before you start opening the ECU. So we're seeing this ECU now. We'll try and get our screwdrivers into this sort of edge here and we'll begin to lift away from the ECU. So we'll get two in there, 
and so we'll lift. Sometimes putting a little bit of a twist on the screwdriver to lift it up as we're moving along. You may have to find yourself sort of really digging in and then lifting up to get it to lift up. And once we've moved a small amount along, we'll simply leave one screwdriver in there, get our standing knife, and we'll encroach into here and we'll try and just break that silicon seal as we go around. When we've worked our way all the way down to this edge here, I'm just going to take the screwdriver back out, when we've worked our way down to almost down to about this edge here, we want to make sure that we're sort of a little bit down here, a little bit at the side, working both edges at the same time. So we're trying to get an even lift. This edge is going to be the hardest one to do. Again, starting from the back of the ECU, away from the loom connector, working your way around. Eventually, once you've got enough of the ECU lid lifted up, you'll find, right side screwdriver to get in there, you'll find as you start to lift the ECU lid up, once you've worked your way around with the screwdrivers, it should start to lift away almost towards this corner here. You might find the loom connector edge comes away first, that's fine, and your ECU lid starts to come up like this. If you need to, don't be scared, apply some more spray. Apply some more brake and clutch cleaner just to soften up the silicon, make it easier, and eventually you'll get to a point, probably about this angle, where you start to feel quite a bit of tension. And that's because this is starting to bend at this point. You don't want that to bend too much. So if it's got to that point here and you're starting to, almost feels like you're bending the lid, just stop. Put the ECU lid back down and work the screwdrivers again back along this edge so it lifts up nicely and evenly and then eventually our ECU lid comes off. I just want to show you inside here, we can see on the back of the lid this black bead of silicon from the factory, that's the seal, that's that raised edge on this side, easy to see there, on this side that we're trying to get our screwdrivers in and separate away from the ECU circuit board. So you see on this ECU example, that black silicon edge along here, you can see where the heat sinks were that we we're trying to separate away from. You can put more thermal paste on there when you're resealing the ECU. It's one of those things, it's um, tuner's preference if you want to do that. Uh, I do recommend if you're doing that, you probably want to clear all the excess that was there to begin with off. Um, in all the years we've been doing this, we've never had to reapply any sort of a heat sink material on there. As long as we're not sort of getting lots of dirt and grime on there, when we reseal the lid of the ECU, it's absolutely fine. There's enough still connection and um, thermal sort of transfer through there that it doesn't overheat anything in the ECU. I so say it's been a good sort of 20 plus years. We've probably been doing this now, sitting in these ECUs. They're absolutely fine. So to reconnect the ECU lid, to, to basically reverse the steps, we've finished doing all the tuning on there, we now need to put our silicon back onto the ECU to create that nice seal. So we've got something here, it's a nice sort of trigger controlled. You can use anything, you can use for sort of almost like a, a plumber's um, applicator to sort of squeeze the silicon on around the outside. A lot of people will come to the circuit board and start laying it down here. They'll start putting the silicon all the way around there the problem is you've got a raised edge and you're trying to apply the silicon on top of that raised edge. Well, it, it wants to sort of run off from one side to the other. You end up, as you're trying to apply the silicon here, with a very sort of wobbly line as you're going along. Well, the easiest way is to utilise the lid. It has a groove built in where the silicon was before. Remember, we're trying to apply the tiniest little bead just to get a waterproof silicon seal on there. So we're just going to gently squeeze our applicator and run a bead of silicon through the groove. We'll repeat that process all the way around. Don't worry if you get slightly too much on there. We don't want to be going crazy like some sort of a silly string can and spraying it all over the ECU circuit board. Whilst yes, it will give a very good waterproof seal, it's going to be a nightmare. If you ever need to open that ECU and the customer chooses to go to stage two or stage three, and you need to connect to the ECU again, you're going to have instant regret because you're not going to be able to get that ECU lid off because the entire thing has become one big giant glued piece onto there. You run the risk of separating chips from the circuit board as they've stuck to the silicon instead of the solder. The silicon ends up being a stronger bond almost than the solder that's holding that little resistor on. So try and keep it nice and neat around the edge. Make any mistakes, a little blue roll or something, clutch clean if you need to, clean the lid up, work on the lid, because if you do make a mistake on this, it's easy to clean it up. If you get silicon all over the circuit board, it's much harder to clean it up if you make a mistake. Once you've got the silicon all the way around the edge, we then simply place the lid back down and put the screws back in. Now we've finished putting the silicon around that groove in the ECU lid, we simply need to reseat it 
onto the ECU. So we're going to take our lid, position it the correct way round, and we're going to start on that left hand side as I'm looking at it, so the right hand side to you, where our heat sink is, effectively reversing the steps that we did when we took the lid off. We're going to line it back up so we can see the holes for the screws through the hole in the lid. I'm just going to push it down and get a nice clean seal. Okay, just want to remove any air bubbles, making sure that silicon bead is all the way around nicely. And now we simply need to put the screws back in. So when I do the screws, I tend to put them in in the opposite way. Okay, so what I do is opposite corners, a bit like when you put a, a wheel on a car, you go top, bottom, left and right to get even load. I'll do the same on here. So I'll start in the corner that's closest to myself. I'll then go to the opposite corner so I don't put too much tension on the one side of the lid, causing it to, to peel up too much on the other side. Let's so go opposite corners. Get our screw into there. And it doesn't really matter which one you do next. It's going to come down to this one down here. Holding the ECU securely as well. It's a little handheld electric screwdriver. There's a little bit of torque in there, so. And there we go. That's our ECU sealed back up, ready to be put back into the car. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. It's really important that we follow those basic steps, making sure we don't put our screwdrivers too far into the ECU or whatever lever bar you're using or method you're using, don't insert that pry bar too far into the ECU. Don't go any further than the groove on that lid, that little raised edge shows you really where the silicon seal is. Beyond that point, you could risk damaging the ECU. We use our clutch or brake cleaner to help sort of soften the silicon and give us an easier sort of um, release of the ECU lid. Using our standing knife or blade, preferably an adjustable one so we can measure how much is really going into the ECU. We don't want a big sort of giant sort of carving knife trying to cut away at the silicon. Apart from the fact it's dangerous to use something like that when trying to open an ECU, the risk is you go too far in and you can do damage to the circuit board. Use our electric screwdriver as well to help take the screws out a bit quicker and making sure we're using some sort of automotive silicon seal that's got some temperature resistance in there as well, isn't conductive, so it can give us a nice waterproof seal on the ECU lid without any risk of damage to the ECU. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, I hope you found it informative, you've learned some steps and maybe some tips and tricks along the way to work with ECU opening in a safe, sensible manner to reduce the risks where possible when opening the ECU lid. Remember, there's always inherent risks when working on an ECU, especially when opening the circuit board, but follow the steps we've shown you today and you should reduce those risks massively and hopefully have a trouble-free tuning career when opening ECUs. Stay tuned for more tuning videos from us, more training videos, and make sure you check out our other videos online for tips and tricks as to how you can tune OBD, bench and boot mode with a variety of tuning tools. Thanks for watching, everybody.